Hey guys, Seb Chief here. Recently I made a tier list on the Moon Knight Village items and unfortunately they basically all got buffed. So rip to that hard work, but I want to make more tier list videos and more and more. It's honestly really fun to me, exploring the complexities of some items, uncovering some crazy strats and rating the items against each other to see which ones are the best and which ones are the worst. And man oh man, will some of the things in this video blow your mind. Today I have for you a shield tier list. Just like last time, we have the double ST for overpowered items that should probably be nerfed, ST for the best in slot items, AT for the great items, BT for the good items, CT for the mech items, and DT for the trash items that you should never seek and maybe never even use if you already have it. Just feed it instead, man. I'm going to be judging how good their damage and utility is against their mana costs and how difficult they are to obtain, and also the stats they offer. And to start off, we have a basic one, the T7 shield. With all the tiered shields, they all stun for 3 seconds, which is an effect that makes an enemy stop shooting, but in reality, it only works on like 10% of the enemies in the game. You'll probably see immune instead, but when it does work, it's cool man. But why would you use a T7 shield when the T0 shield stuns for 3 seconds as well? Well, the higher the tier, the more shots the shield shoots, making it much easier to apply the stun. T0 only shoots 1 shot while the T7 shoots 5, so that also leads to the T7 shield doing more damage because T7 deals an average of 370 damage per shot so five different shots means you're dealing in an ideal scenario 1850 damage on average per ability usage or 18.5 damage per mana spent which isn't that great to be honest and it's made even worse when you realize that hitting all of your shield shots is super tough you basically have to be giving the enemy a lap dance and also every shot is reduced by the enemy's defense the only thing redeeming about the highest tier shield in my my opinion is the base stats it gives. 40 HP, 40 mana and 14 defense. HP and defense are very valuable stats, helps with your survivability, but since this only drops from Oryx Free and there's probably the worst T7 items relative to the other abilities available to the respective class, it goes in the bin. And as you'll see, some of the other shields available for Knight which take less effort to obtain make this shield a joke. I think this shield should do more damage or stun longer to make it more viable. I honestly believe this shield should be at the top of the trash tier. Similarly to the T7 shield, we have the T0 shield. No, I'm not trolling with the inclusion of this item. I think T0 shields have their place, because usually their utility is the same as higher tiers. Like for example in this case, it stuns for as long as the T7 shield and is 15% cheaper. So it's actually the superior shield for stunning, but that's assuming that you're hitting the one shot that the T0 shield shoots, which honestly is quite tough to do consistently, especially on moving targets. And since the T0 shield is cheaper to stun with, you can combo in other shields, like the next one will be talking about on the list, and it's also the most mana efficient shield to proc items like Snake Eye Ring, or the Cage's Wacky Biki, or Cage no Hikari, which is the armor and ring from Moonlight Village. At least this is the cheapest ring to proc those so far. <laughs> but it is only 15% less mana compared to the T7 shield, which isn't the biggest deal, and we will see better ability proccing shields later in this video, including one you will not believe, unless you might already know what I'm talking about. t shield also offers a measly 2 defense which is 15 defense less than the T7 shield and offers no extra fame percent gain. But it is a shield that you should only be swapping out temporarily to get the stun off unless you're starting a brand new character in which it's available for you straight away for no cost. So how can you complain man? I think it should be low in the mech tier. The next one on the list is called the snake skin shield. It's similar to a tiered shield where it stuns in a cone, as effectively as the T7 shield with a 3 second stun, but it does less damage and has less stats. But it does offer 5 speed, which gives an extra 5% movement if you have the base 50 movement speed of an 8-8 knight, and it also gives 7 defense. And it costs the same per ability use. So T7 shield is definitely preferable if you do have one, but snakeskin shield is so much easier to get. A player starting out would get a snakeskin shield way earlier than a T7 shield, it's a common drop from the snake pit main boss, dropping from a cyan bag. You're more than likely to get one while farming for the snake eye ring that you should always be getting on every character that doesn't have a speedy. And you can also craft it from the forge actually with four crappy UTs like sprite wand or snake eye rings or snake uh, levers. 
and even the UTs from Spider Den and Forbidden Jungle for example, considering that it's easier to get than a tier 4 shield while being better because it offers 1 less defense but 5 more speed and roughly 10% more damage, I would actually put it in the top of the mech tier for now. Next up we have the Shield of Flowing Clarity which is basically the slowing shield because it's the only one that does slow and man is it good at it. It feels so nice to use because the shotgun of this shield of 5 shots travel out more quickly and slows for 4 seconds while only costing 80 mana which means it's actually cheaper than the tier 0 shield but since they're both cheap you can swap between them and maintain a cheap slow and stun with a high level pet which is useful on enemies like the fungal caven boss. It is bad for damage though, but it offers a whopping 17 defense, which is similar to the value of the stats on the tier 7 shield, and it drops from an easy dungeon called the Magic Woods, you probably know what it is. Though in my experience, it's quite a rare drop from the dungeon, and the dungeon itself is pretty annoying to find in the Godlands compared to others. The only other option for slowing for night is the Moon Knight Village heavy armor, or the ring, and those are some of the best items to use at night, but they are tough to find. But those two items do draw back the value of the shields, since the slow isn't exclusive to just that shield anymore. But all in all, because of the value the shield provides for how easy it is to obtain, I think it should be in the middle of the great tier. Next is a bit of an interesting one. We have the Spiteful Scrotum. Wait, no, I mean Skewdom, sorry. This one is still a stunning base shield, but it differs to the tier 7 shield in a lot of different ways. First of all, it shoots in a straight line rather than spread out, but it's a bit thicker than the tier 0 shot, so it feels easy to hit. So when trying to deal damage with a shield compared to tier 7, I actually prefer the Skewdom shield because it's easier to hit the shots, but using it as a stunning shield does feel worse because if you do miss once, the Skewdom has a cooldown of 0.5 seconds, so if you do miss, you can't uh, try again until the cooldown runs out. And also, because of the cooldown, you also can't interchange with other shields, so you're stuck with this one only. So that means you can't use like a shield of flowing clarity on the side, at least unless you wait out the cooldown. But something that makes this a nice stunning shield is the range. Since this one has a further range of 3.5 instead of 3.2, I know it's not that different, but it does help when versing uh, crazy enemies like O2. Yeah, it just allows you to stun uh, for longer. And it also has a stun duration of 4 seconds instead of 3 seconds like the other ones we've mentioned so far on this list. So this is also the most efficient stunning shield we've talked about so far. And it stuns for roughly 20% more per mana than the other shields we've talked about. And it also armor pierces. So this shield doesn't get decimated by defense like the other multiple shot shields do. And also, so far it has my favorite stat line being 4 attack, 10 defense, and 4 speed. This item is relatively easy compared to the other shields on this list to get because it drops from Janus, which should be a boss that you're doing every single time you're doing an Oryx run because after destroying all the statues, it opens up the wall behind the stone guardians and you can actually kill the Janus if you have enough damage before the Oryx 1 dies, so it's basically free loot, and that chance at the Janus shield. And yeah, the main drawback is the cooldown, or the only drawback, because when you do miss it punishes you pretty damn hard, but I still think it should be low on the great tier. Up next we have the Cogbold shield. Similar to all the previous shields except for the Skewdom shield, it again has that shotgun of 5 shots in a spread, but it doesn't stun this time. Instead, the shots only do damage, but at least it's a good amount of damage, being 1800. And it also armor pierces, but surprisingly it still does less than a T7 shield to a T0 target, and again it's hard to hit the full shotgun without doing a dance on the enemy, especially with this one since it doesn't stun, so the enemy could still shoot you while you are dancing on it. But uh, what this shield trades out its stun for is the defense boost you gain. It's either 15 more defense or 20 more defense if you're under 50% HP. And not only does it apply to yourself, it applies to people around you, lasting for 4 seconds. So this would really help squishy classes like for example robe classes because they usually max at 25 defense and they're usually wearing a robe that brings them up to around 40 defense. So a 15 defense boost from there is basically increasing their defense by almost 50%, which is pretty damn nice and would make the time a lot nicer. As you can imagine, if you bring this to a fat raid, it would pay off if you're the only one bringing one, because it would help the total survivability of players a lot. But it comes at a big cost, because it doesn't give you any defense of your own, and it gives you some sh 
to base stats. 4 speed and 5 vit? What the hell man? Even if he used the shield for the reason that it was made, the defense boost, it still will not give you as much shield as the T7 shield or the flowing clarity would give from not even using the ability. The defense also doesn't stack when using it multiple times as you'd expect it to, like it would with defensive fusions for example, and it's the most expensive shield by far, costing you 120 mana per usage. Very yucky. And it's far from the easiest shield to obtain, it is from the Cogbold dungeon, one of the hardest dungeons in the game, but having at least one of these in a big raid can be nice, I guess, maybe. <laughs> it does increase the amount of damage everyone needs to get their pet to be disabled, so it might indirectly improve your team's damage because of their increased confidence, because of their new tankiness. I can imagine this being really nice in like a crystal cavern or a fungal, where there's just so many different shots and each shot gets reduced by your defense, but in the more endgame dungeons like Shatters and Oryx Free, I can't imagine increased defense helping that much. Look, I don't think the shield is horrible, but maybe it's not that good. I think this should probably go in the bottom of the B tier. Up next, we have the Sunken Buckler. And man, this is one piece of sh this is another shield where its primary purpose is to stun, but instead it stuns for 2.5 seconds for the cost of 100 mana, making it the lowest efficiency stunning shield in the game so far that we've mentioned. Not including the champion's bastion, but that has its own uh, separate purpose other than the stunning. But it also has a shotgun that deals 1750 damage total. But since it instead shoots 10 different shots instead of 5, and the spread is much much wider than the other shields on the list, it does pitiful damage in reality. I would not be surprised if you do as much damage as the snakeskin shield when it comes to actually using the item. The redeeming factor is that it does have decent stats. 10 defense, 6 speed and 4 vitality is pretty nice and it's made even better with ST combos. But to be honest, the only other ST piece I can imagine wearing is the armor because it's alright, it's better than the tiered armors in my opinion. And the sword and the ring are so bad. The 2 piece combo here is 20 HP, 3 attack, 2 speed, which is alright, but the shield is is absolute poop. I would rather use any of the other ST pieces, the sword or the ring. The only cool thing about the shield is that you can make a cool circle man, but other than that, yeah. <laughs> I'd love to see this shield get more stun duration and damage to make it more worthwhile for the effort that it takes to find. I really think this shield deserves to be in the trash tier man, at the very bottom, below the tier 7 shield. Feed it instead for the 950 feed power it offers. Now here's a very similar shield to the Cogbold shield. The Champion's Bastion which is the ST shield from Oryx 2. Now this is super super similar because this also gives a defense boost, but this only gives a solo boost of 15 defense and it's for 2.5 seconds, which is worse because it's 1.5 seconds less than the Cogbold shield and it doesn't share with allies even, but it is stackable. So from my experience when using this shield, you really often have 22 more defense and it is only 75 mana to use, the cheapest shield so far, almost half the cost of the Cogbold shield as well. So so when you're solo, so far it's no doubt better than the Cogbold shield, but maybe in the group Cogbold shield could be better. With this shield, it also shoots a shotgun of 5 defense, dealing in total 2100 damage. That's the most of any shield by far and it's the cheapest. This shield does 28 damage per mana, versus the second highest damage shield so far which is the T7, on paper at least, which deals 18.5 damage per mana, which is 33% more damage per mana spent. But it does have less range, being 2.8 range, not too much less, about 10% less than the tier 7. And yeah, on top of all this, it still stuns, but it's only for 1.5 seconds per time. But it's still better than the no stun that the Cogbold has. Using this shield to proc abilities is the cheapest so far on this list, and it's probably also the best for doing so, because if you use this shield that improves your defense with a snake eye ring, as you can imagine, it also helps with rushing. And if you're stacking Yumi flames from the armor and the ring, it's probably nice to have high defense because you have to be very close to the enemy to get the Yumi flames to affect them. Now the stats on this shield are pretty bad. I'll let you guess what it is. I'll give you a few seconds. Yep, you guessed it, maybe, I'm not sure. It's literally no stats. <laughs> but this is made up for when you wear other pieces of this ST set, because it is a set bonus, and the combo stats are pretty nice. For two pieces, you get an extra five attack, and then here's the big one. For three pieces, you get an extra five dex and 15 defense. So that kind of makes up for the no stats on the normal shield. And then if you do wear a fourth piece, you get another 75 HP, but that does feel like less of a boost than the three piece bonus. 
so wearing three pieces is probably the peak. Now the armour from the set is ST for DPS, the Mercy's Bane, and the ring and the sword are pretty decent, they're both equal to like a tier 13 sword and a tier 6 HP ring, that's pretty good considering that it drops from Oryx 2, which means you're basically bound to get these items. You can't just avoid Oryx 2, it's one of the most common bosses and staple bosses in the game. You're more than likely to kill this boss once every couple of hours at least. I feel like due to the shield's power and accessibility, this shield deserves to at least be in the great tier above the Skewdom. Now time for one of the most disgustingly broken items in the game, the Escutcheon. This item used to be well balanced and was one of the best shields in the game when it released, but I guess people were too bad at using it or something, because since then it got buffed in damage by like 50%, and it also feels like the range and radius got buffed by like 50%, I don't remember exactly, but yeah, now it's an insanely, insane, insane shield, <laughs> and it drops from Oryx 3. This shield alone makes Knight one of the best endgame classes in the game, so where the hell do I damn begin? When you use your ability, the shield lets out free bursts that has a 5 tile radius and you can use it 3 tiles away which means you effectively get a 5.5 range shield. What the f dookie games? And since the shield does have a 2 second stun it means that it has a stun duration of 3.25 seconds if you do hit an enemy with the first and the last pulse which is super easy because of the radius and as you can imagine much 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 12 seconds later much easier to hit than all of the other shields stuns all for only 100 mana. So yeah, don't even consider using another shield for its stunning if you already have this one. Maybe except for the T0 shield if you want to do some swaps, but now when it comes to the damage, this is even more disgusting if you can believe it. Every burst does 1100 damage, so it deals a total of 3300 damage if all three bursts hit. And I don't know why I'm saying if, because more than likely all three bursts will hit, even if you're a monkey. So yeah, that means if the enemy gets hit by only one burst, you're doing on par damage with Janus Shield basically. So rip the Janus Shield. And yeah, since it does 3300 damage, it basically does double the damage of the highest damage shields we've mentioned so far, like the Champion's Bastion, the T7 Shield, the Cogbold Shield. And yeah, as we mentioned, it's so easy to hit all the bursts with a 5.5 range. Like holy sh man. And if that wasn't enough, this shield also pierces enemy armor. What? Why? How? Decker Games? This shield also has pretty nice base stats being 10 defense and 7 speed. The funny thing is that this is the least OP part of the shield and it's still really nice. The ability is so overpowered that it's a popular knight build to just run this shield with mana reduction items so you can press space, like the monkey you are, with Twilight Gemstone in Syndicate Armor. Now another weak point about this shield is it does only drop from Oryx 3 like the T7 shield, but it's way more accessible because the drop rate is increased by Oryx 3 chest events, while the T7 shield is isn't, like it doesn't usually feature in the chests, and it probably has a higher drop rate from the O3 as well, because there's 17 different T7 items, so uh, pretty sure it's less. Also the Escutcheon has a blueprint, where you can make it from 4 legendary items, it's just 2 of these items have to be from Oryx Sanctuary, it doesn't have to be from Oryx 3 himself, it could be from a mini boss, and you just need 2 O3 marks, and the 1500 Forge Fire of course. Theoretically, you only need to do 2 O3s to get the shield as long as you get two whites from the mini bosses and another two legendary items from wherever because yeah you can get the blueprints from the tinkerer rotation costing you 50 ancient schematics and you get ancient schematics from o3 shadows or void it's insane that this shield has been this busted for this long i really want to see this item become more balanced to give the other shields a chance i feel so bad for them all something that decker could do to make this item more interesting and less branded is make the bursts maybe more spread out time wise so that you have to place it with more fort instead of just spamming it like a monkey that the average knight player is. And since this item has no downsides, you can make the most of the 8% XP bonus at all times. At the moment, this item is at the very, very, very 12 set top of the f***ing broken nerf this item tier. Up next, it's the crystal shield. 
In case you missed it, Sea Shield went through a controversial change. It used to be an undoubtedly strong item, but after the rework, people thought the item was just not worth touching at all. But in reality, I think it still is good for demolishing early to mid game content and still has the potential to do crazy stuff in end game. It just needs more attention and experienced players to experiment with it, I think. So, how it works now, when you hold space, the shield gives you an armored buff, and when you get hit while you have that armored buff, the shield shoots a projectile back each time in the same direction that deals 300 damage. Even though the old sea shield instead gave invincibility but didn't fire back shots, it was dealing way more damage over time because the invincibility was just too broken and people were using the eye ring with it which basically had the same effect as a sea shield now, so you could just stand on enemies for way longer. But there's no doubt that the new sea shield does way more damage in shorter bursts because if you use the eye ring it deals double the damage per shot. So yeah, using the sea shield in specific scenarios can help you do 70,000 damage in some instances. I wouldn't be surprised if you could do over 150,000 damage to be honest, but it is really hard to use these combos. And it's not like you even need the invincible for sea shield to be used well, even in end game. Like for example, in this phase, the shots do so little damage, but there's so many of them that I end up reflecting so much and I still deal tens of thousands of damage per second. On top of all this, if you use the sea shield quickly enough it actually costs no mana. The only benefit that the shield does provide when you do do this is that it shoots out a 350 damage shot, but the main reason why you would care to do this is because it counts as an ability usage, meaning that if you are using an item that has an ability proc, like for example the snake eye ring, it allows you to spam it. There's no doubt there's going to be even more items in the future that have ability procs, but the main reason why you would want this is for the moonlight village items that allow you to spawn flames. I made a full separate video about the potential of the Sea Shield if you'd like to check it out. And at the moment, I do believe that Sea Shield deserves to be at the top of S tier, but I think it has the potential to even go up to the double S tier. But no way it would be to Scutcheon, that sh is just too broken. Next up, we have the Brutal Buckler. This one is completely unique on the tier list so far because it's a straight up DPS shield. Can shoot a whopping 20 shots dealing 400 damage each, isn't that crazy man? But it's a lot more epic on paper than it is in game. This shield always shoots a cone of 8 shots dealing a total damage of 3200 damage on average and it has a 4 tile radius so it's pretty nice. This shotgun already does more damage than all of the other shotgun shields we've mentioned on the list. But on top of that, if you have over 80% HP, it shoots another 12 shots around you for another 4800 damage on average. So if you're on an enemy that is 8000 damage total, bonkers stonkers. But that's the thing, you have to be right on the enemy. You can't do that too often anymore in this game, especially in end game. It used to be very usable in Oryx 3, but they made it that the Oryx 3 gets invincible between every reset, which let's be real they had to do that. But you can still use it at other times because there's a bit of a delay when the radial shots come out, so if an enemy is chasing you, you can get lucky in all of the shots can hit him. You can also use it with the vortex plating armor which makes your damage even more because the vortex plating shoots another 12 radial shots dealing an average of 300 damage each and it spawns on the exact same point as the radial shots from the buckler so it brings the total damage from 8,000 to an even more insane 11.6 thousand from one ability usage. The armor burst does have a 4.8 second cooldown though and the shield does reduce in damage quite significantly when the enemy does have high defense because it's applied to every single shot you shoot but it still does so damn much and yeah especially for mid game the buckler and the vortex plating is so damn nice because you can sit on enemies without much punishment oh yeah and i also forgot to mention that the base stats are also pretty yummy giving 40 HP, 4 attack, and 10 defense. This shield is crazy good, but I wouldn't say it's overpowered because it requires a lot of skill to use. I think this shield is very deserving to sit on the top of S tier. Last, but definitely not least, we have the Ogma. Come on man, everyone knows this item. Do I really need to tell you what it does? Okay, fine. It's basically like your regular shield with the shotgun of five shots, dealing an average of 350 damage each. But instead of stunning, this item has a very super unique effect of armor breaking enemies. And there's only one other item that does this consistently. And armor breaking enemies is a big deal. It's basically another curse or berserk or damaging for the group and is especially good against endgame enemies that don't prevent armor break because they usually have higher defense. 
For example, you can use it against all of the shutters bosses. And it's pretty easy to use. Just get in the free tile radius, press spacebar, and the enemy will be armor broken, probably giving your whole group a 20% damage boost. Unless someone already has an armor break. It's a no-brainer to bring in a decently sized group if the group already doesn't have one. But if you're solo, you're probably better off using other DPS shields. This item drops from Lord of the Lost Lands, and you can get a blueprint from it from the Tinkerer, like the Escutcheon and the Sea Shield, but it doesn't have any specific requirements of where the legendary items have to be from, so you just have to get four legendary items and you can make it. Solid ST item. That's it for the tier list guys, let me know your thoughts. Do you agree? Or did one of my opinions make me a big idiot? Let me know in the comments down below. Also make sure to like the video and subscribe if you want to be notified of future tier list videos. And if you want to discuss even further about items in the game, other than just in the comments, you can join my stream or my discord, links in the description. I love you, peace.